Hi there, I'm immigration attorney Heather Poole. Were you pulled over by the police and a bag of hashish or marijuana was found in your car? Did the consulate refuse you a visa because of a drug crime? Are you worried about being deported? Then this video is for you. If you are trying to sponsor a loved one to come to the United States and he or she is interviewing for a green card, the consul is going to have them undergo a medical exam, including a blood test. That will test for marijuana and the presence of other controlled substances. This is because the Immigration and Nationality Act bans green cards to those who have admitted to or have act an actual conviction for a controlled substance violation. A controlled substance that appears on the federal schedules can make someone ineligible to get a green card, even if the substance is legal in the state where the immigrant bought it. Federal law, when it comes to controlled substances, will always take priority over state law and federal immigration matters. So if a loved one is at this consulate medical exam and admits to use of a controlled substance, then the civil surgeon will inform the consulate and the immigrant will be barred for medical reasons from interviewing again for the immigrant visa for at least a year to see if the person still has the drug abuser inadmissibility charge. On top of this, only one type of drug is waivable if someone is applying for a green card, and that is 30 grams or less of marijuana. Over the years, the courts have expanded this to include items related to marijuana, including hashish, which is part of the cannabis plant, as long as it is the equivalent weight of marijuana with potential for more in unusual circumstances. The 30 grams of marijuana conviction waiver also covers a conviction for possession of drug paraphernalia as it relates to marijuana use. You may also be eligible to apply for 212H waiver in immigration deportation proceedings to stop your deportation if you have been convicted of possession of 30 grams or less of marijuana. The 212H waiver requires that the crime took place more than 15 years prior to the current waiver application and that the applicant is rehabilitated and their admission is not contrary to U.S. interests and that the immigrant deserves the grant of the waiver in a positive exercise of discretion. However, if the criminal conduct that led to the marijuana possession conviction is less than 15 years old, the applicant has to prove extreme hardship will occur to their lawful permanent resident or U.S. citizen spouse or parent if the immigrant's waiver is not approved and the immigrant gets deported. But even if extreme hardship is successfully argued, the immigrant must also show that she or he is a good person deserving of the waiver. The 212H waiver also allows a child to be the qualifying relative for the waiver if the child is a U.S. citizen under the age of 21. All waivers are discretionary. The immigrant can show this by a lack of criminal history since that conviction at issue. They've done volunteer work in the community, they've assisted others in need, they've been paying their taxes regularly, they haven't done any other crimes, and other extenuating circumstances surrounding the conviction and of course, remorse for committing the crime in the first place. So notice that a crime of possession of cocaine, heroin, methamphetamines, or other prescription drugs such as hydrocodone that are not your own will be considered a controlled substance violation under current federal immigration law, even if it's a small, minuscule amount. None of this is waivable. So what does that mean? An immigrant visa cannot be issued to you. A green card cannot be issued to you. There is no waiver. Even if you're married to a U.S. citizen, you have a simple possession conviction for cocaine use, you're not immigrating to the United States. If you're trying to come to the U.S., the only options available to you may be a non-immigrant visa waiver, which waives such a crime, but only for the duration of a temporary visa. Logically, I don't know how realistic it is to apply for an NIV waiver if you are applying because you want to come see your U.S. citizen spouse. If you already have an immigrant visa lodged in the system, it's unlikely that a consulate would issue you a non-immigrant visa waiver for a B-2, a visitor visa, or an F-1 student visa, for instance, because they would be concerned that your real intent was just to move to the United States to be with your spouse. And you'd be really tempted to overstay the temporary visa and live in the U.S. permanently. And there's no way you can ever overcome that because of your drug conviction. A drug conviction can do serious damage to your immigration case and your options. If you're arrested for possession, and before you take any pleas, always consult with a licensed, experienced immigration attorney about the plea you are being offered, and to determine if there may be a safer plea you could take if there are negative immigration consequences to what you're being charged with. 
Your attorney will need to see the plea offer and the criminal complaint to be able to properly start to advise you on this. If you would like to hear more about this subject, please leave us a comment below. And if you'd like this video, please like us and subscribe. Become part of the family. If you would also like to talk with me about your case, visit our website, humanrightsattorney.com, to book your appointment or give us a call today. Good luck out there.